Grace and peace to you, friends, and welcome to Community Presbyterian Church. My name is Thomas Lyons, and I'm the Director of Music Ministries here at Community. It is truly a wonderful day to worship as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday. It's wonderful to see each and every one of you here. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment, at the end of each of the pews, you'll find a little red attendance pad. We ask that you kindly sign that, pass it to your neighbor, so that way we can keep track of who's here and who's not. Uh, to our friends who are on Facebook, we welcome you as well. Please remember to uh, like, share, and comment to let us know that you're watching today's worship service. Friends, in your bulletins, you'll find some, uh, some colorful sheets of paper that'll uh, tell you what's going on around here at the church. The first is uh, for the nominating committee. There's a form in there for that. Those forms are due back to the office by the end of November. So please make sure to either nominate yourself or somebody that you think would be great to serve on the pastor night nominating committee. And those again, forms are due by the end of the month. Advent is quickly coming upon us. Next week is our first week of Advent. So we'll be transforming our worship spaces into an Advent celebration. Um, every year we ask for your help uh, in lighting the Advent candles. In the uh, weekly announcements that went out on Wednesday and again on our Facebook page, you'll find a, uh, a link to sign up to light the Advent candles and read at the beginning of the service. So if that's something that you feel called to do, we invite you to sign up. If not uh, online, please feel to reach out to myself or Melissa or Robert or Pastor John, and we can make sure that your name gets on the list for either the nine or the 11 o'clock service. Um, finally, Friday morning community yoga. If you would like to join community yoga, our finance officer, Charity, will be uh, doing a class starting December 2nd at 845 in the youth hall. All are welcome to attend. Robert did say at the first service that he's gonna give it a try. So if you'd like to see Robert do some yoga, we invite you to go on Fridays starting December 2nd at 845 in the youth wing. Those friends are all our announcements, and I invite you to turn in your bulletin to our call to worship, which is responsive. Come, let us worship God, for there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of all, who is above all and through all in all. We come with humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another in love. Let us worship the Lord. Friends, please stand and lift, let's lift our voices in song this morning as we sing our opening hymn, of, hymn this morning, number 202, Amazing Grace, all verses. I invite you to stand and sing with us.
friends, I invite you to remain standing for this morning's confession and assurance of pardon. Holy God, we confess that we have neglected to declare Jesus the King and model for our lives. We have been quick to call on others to follow the ways of Christ, yet slow to do the same. We have been bold in demanding generosity, mercy, and forgiveness, yet quiet when it comes to offering inclusion, love, and compassion. Forgive us, O oh God, restore in us yet again the commitment to be more Christian in the world, in deed and in spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn to your neighbor as free and forgiven servants of Christ and uh, greet your neighbor. Friends, as, as we gather back together and head, head towards our time for all ages and the givings of times and offerings, I'd just like to remind us of one of the ministries that we uh, partake in here at, at Community Press, and that is the Salvation Army's bell ringing. Uh, again, there was an email that was sent out uh, in the weekly announcement and again on Facebook. Uh, that'll tell you what dates and times are available. It's a two-hour slot that we're asking for some volunteers to go out and ring the, ring the bell and, uh, at the Publix in Neptune Beach. Uh, friends, if you feel called to do that, uh, please again sign up on the, um, the sign-up genius that went out in the weekly bulletin or speak to Robert because he seems to be the expert on this field. Um, that's what Melissa told me to, to say. So. Robert is the person to contact. Uh, friends, all the ways that you give uh, to this church are special and meaningful, and without your help and generosity, we wouldn't be able to do what we do here at the church. With that, I'd like to invite the ushers down to take up this morning's offering.
Friends, you may be seated. And as we do so in continuing this, ser- this morning's service, I invite you to listen to the word of God from the psalmist uh, in our first scripture reading, coming from Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord and all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Donna Bowen, and I am pleased to be here this morning. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verses 25 through 35. Hear the word of our Lord. When the crowd found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then the crowd asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, today, today we're all here gathered for Christ the King Sunday, the very last Sunday of the year. Next Sunday begins Advent and a brand new year. Clean slate, new beginnings, new excitement, new possibilities, new missions, new ministries. Today we celebrate the end of a wonderful year in God's presence and next Sunday we come ready and anticipating new exciting things. The church has celebrated Christ the King Sunday since the very beginning of the church, since there were little house churches, because those first disciples knew that they had experienced Christ, they had heard Christ, they had walked with Christ, they believed in Christ, but how were they going to convince those who come after? How were they going to convince the next generation? And so they began what we call the liturgical year, the church year. 
And it goes like this. Advent is the beginning. Advent is the weeks that we wait for the birth of God's Son. We wait for God to break into history and deliver to us God's only Son. And after Advent and Christmas, we celebrate Epiphany with the coming of the wise men. And then we move into a time when we look at Jesus' ministry and how he healed and touched people. And we begin a time of prayer during Lent when we think about how we can be healed, how we can touch and heal others. What, what story is God sharing and revealing in this Jesus of Nazareth? And then we have the great festival of Easter and we celebrate the resurrection. And from there we move into Pentecost, the beginning of the church, and throughout the long summer, we look at, again at Christ's ministry and how he healed and touched and shared and prayed. And we look at his story and we say, how are we to follow that story? How are we to be healers? And how are we to be ones who pray? How are we to be ones who reach out to the least and the lost? And we, we look at that through reading scriptures all summer long and then we come to fall. And we come to today. Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday is the Sunday that each and every one of us are invited to look at Christ and say, who is Christ for me? Who is this one that I believe in? Is Christ a king uh, in, the, in the David and Solomon, only more glorious and more beautiful? Is Christ king of me? Or are there other images, other words that I use to describe the love I have for God, the love that God has for me, and how that love spreads out into the world? And so today we are here to ponder that question. Who exactly is Christ? Who exactly is the one I believe in? And what do I do about it? Where does that lead me? How does that help me to live in the world? How does that help me to interact with all the wonderful faces around me? Who is this Christ? And as we answer that, as we begin to understand the fullness of God's love, then we are ready. We are ready to risk beginning again as we celebrate in Advent. And the cycle goes on year after year after year. We hear Gospels, we hear the letters, we hear the Old Testament, we hear the Psalms, we hear all these words of God, and they sink into us. And year after year after year, we begin to know more and more about God. It's a mind thing. But more importantly, it's not just information. The cycle that goes on year after year after year forms us into the people we are. The words that we hear travel down and become into our heart and become who we are. And that is how we grow closer to God. We become more and more the image of Christ, but it is also how we help those around us to, be, to come closer, to grow deeper, to be formed into the image of Christ themselves. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal that is Christ the King Sunday. And we are celebrating the conclusion of a wonderful, even though it may have been rocky, still a wonderful and blessed year. So let's just look at what scripture has to say to us on Christ the King Sunday. We have this reading from John's Gospel, and I need to give you a little background. Um, Jesus is on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he's been over on the eastern part, and he's been over there teaching, he's been over there healing, he's been over there praying for people, he's been over there showing all kinds of signs of who he is. Most importantly, this crowd of at least 5,000 people has shown up to hear him speak. And when it got supper, when it got dinner time, he took a little bit of bread, a couple of fish, and he fed all of them. 
Everyone had their fill, and there was still food left over. So this crowd that has just been fed from a, a, a grocery bag of bread goes along the shore of Galilee until it comes to Capernaum, which is where Jesus kind of had his home base. His friends lived there. He had a home to be there. He had houses to stay in. He was comfortable. He was welcomed. He was in his home base, and here comes this crowd of 5,000 plus people, and they come to him, and they say, show us a sign who you are. We'd like to believe in you, but, you know, show us a sign. I'll let that think in. I mean, he's just fed 5,000 people with a couple of loaves of bread. Hello. And yet, you know, and I straight-faced Jesus just looks at them and says, let's talk about bread. And they say, well, you know, hey, when we were wandering around the wilderness for 40 years, Moses and, you know, we were all wandering around for 40 years, we had bread every day. It came down from heaven. We were never hungry. 40 years, not hungry once. Again, straight-faced Jesus says, it wasn't Moses. Moses was not feeding you. It was God who was feeding you. God is the one who was faithful. God is the one who sustained you. God is the one who walked with you. God is the one who brought you to the promised land. It was God. And it is God through me who still loves and sustains and cares for you. And then the last verse, verse 35. This is, gets to the core of Christ the King Sunday, and it gets to the core of who is Jesus. Jesus says, I am, which is the divine name for God, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Christ is the I am. Now, as I was thinking about this critical verse, kind of the, the big verse of this whole story, I was thinking about bread. My mother um, grew up as a child in the Depression, and for her whole life, until she was no longer able, she made bread every single week. Every single week when I was growing up, on our kitchen counter there would be this bowl and it'd have like little flowers on the side of it, and it'd have a tea cloth over the top, and there would be bread rising in that bowl every single week. And she would take it out, and she'd play with it, and she'd get it into the loaves, and, and she'd put it in the oven, and she would be baking bread, except for one piece. One piece of this dough she would leave out She'd put it on the counter, she'd take her rolling pin, and she'd roll it out into a rectangle that was like maybe a half inch thick. And then, and this is the brilliance, just the right amount of sugar she would sprinkle on that dough. And then just the right amount of cinnamon she would sprinkle on that dough. And it's, it's very, I mean, it's very hard to get just the right amount, but my mom did it. Just, and then, just the right amount of raisins sprinkled on top. And then she would roll it up to a long roll, and then she'd take her knife and cut it off. And she'd take those sections, and she'd put them in, in the baking pan, and she'd put it in the oven, and you could smell cinnamon rolls. Baking fresh cinnamon rolls. And when they would come out, she just put a little bit of glaze because you didn't want to take away from the sugar and the cinnamon and the raisins and the taste of this wonderful bread. And every week, I mean, I'm so, every week there would be these wonderful cinnamon rolls for my whole life. She never tired of it. She never complained of it. It was always a joy to her every week to be able to make this bread for us. And when I think of bread, I think of my mother's cinnamon rolls. Uh, it was, they were made with love. They were made perfection. They were the most beautiful, wonderful rolls everywhere. And I will never forget the love that she poured into those cinnamon rolls. 
That's the bread of life. That's the kind of love that God pours in to us as the bread of life. Last week, the, uh, the woman who was here, Aaron, used the word hesed. Wonderful word. H-E-D, H-E-S-E-D, hesed. Can you, hesed. And it means love in a way that no word in English means. It means that fierce love that reaches out and grabs you and pulls you in when you're drowning. It means that gentle, kind love of, of picking up a gentle baby and holding it close. It means that love that doesn't ever give up, unconditional every day, every hour, no matter how many poor choices you make. Hesed. That's the love that is found in this bread of life. That's the love that's poured out from God to us. It is a love that fills us and sustains us, and we never need to look for that love because it is always there. The other thing that Jesus says is, if you come to me, you will never be thirsty. You will have this living water that is with you for your whole life. One person has said that living water is like standing underneath a waterfall. And the water just comes down and it washes and it cleans and it gets rid of debris. It's just life affirming. A few weeks ago, we had the story of the woman at the well. And she came and it was hot and it was a, the well is deep and it's hard to get the water. And Jesus asked her for water. And then Jesus looks into her eyes. He looks right directly inside her and tells her who she is. All the layers of shame, all the layers of guilt, all the layers of disappointment, all the layers of being told she wasn't good enough, all are washed away. And Jesus sees her true identity and she sees her true purpose, and she runs back to the village to say, I have met God. I have met someone who has washed away all the ugliness so that I can see who I truly am. She was thirsty for understanding. She was thirsty for a true sense of identity. She was thirsty for a purpose. She was thirsty for a place in her family and in her community. And Jesus filled that thirst forever. Filled that thirst. This is the Jesus who is the great I am, who is the bread that loves like Hesed, who pours water down on us, pours grace down on us, so that we have shalom, a peace, a peace that is with us forever, a sense of being in the right place, being with the right people, doing the right things, being at home with our identity. That's what this little short verse is talking about. When we ask on Christ the King Sunday, who is Jesus? Jesus says, I am the bread. I am the Hesed who will not give up on you. And I am the living water who will wash you clean so you can see the beautiful God-created child of God that you are. No one else. So as I was thinking about how I was preparing for Advent, how I was going to be thinking about Jesus and what were the images that I was going to be holding near to my heart as I get ready for this glorious new year, I wrote them down on a, on a card. Now, I could have written them on my phone, but I'm not quite there yet. So I just used a card. First of all, I'm going to be remembering this week that God is the Good Shepherd that he's the one who looks for me and finds me when I am lost and will not let me go. Jesus is my companion. 
He walks with me, he journeys with me, ups and downs, he's still with me, and when life is really, really bad, he carries me. That's who Jesus is to me. He is the healer of brokenness. He is the one who loves and cares about everyone, even those who are labeled outside, not good enough, not, not right. He loves them too. And they're coming in, they're, they're to come in and be part of my family. And he is the host of the great feast where everyone is invited, everyone finds shalom, everyone is loved with chesed, and there is bread, and there is wine, and there is water, and there is a sense of just being in the right place. He is the one who is loved. He is the one who is grace. He is the one who is chesed. He is the one who brings shalom for me. And as we leave this week and we're getting ready and you know we're putting up Christmas trees and all those chrismans and little candles and whatever, whatever, you know, let's think about it. Let's think, who is Christ to me? How has Christ impacted my life? How is Christ leading me to go out into the world to be the voice of Christ, to be the hands of Christ, to be the feet of Christ. How can I be that one who carries the word of Christ forward? And so that when we come back next week and it's new beginning and it's new excitement and it's beautiful and it's glittery and the music is fabulous, who am I coming to welcome? Who am I coming to welcome for this next new and glorious year. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today is Christ the King. We celebrate how blessed we are, how loved we are, that you can see and love us in all of who our reality is. And we pray that this week that we hold dear to who we believe you to be who we know you to be, so that as we begin a new year, fresh slate, new beginnings, new opportunities, that we can move forward knowing that you are indeed the one, the great I am. Amen. Friends, as we continue worship this morning, we do so with our prayers of the people. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to weave them into a prayer that I've written this week for them. Um, <clears throat> oh, gracious and glorious God, do we take the time in the morning to notice the dew on the grass or acknowledge the ocean waves that strike the coastal rocks with a crash? Is it we who notice the very first snowflakes as they descend from above in the winter, or do we watch as a bird in the tree takes a, a, its very first bound around from its familiar surroundings? Will we watch as the autumn leaves fall from the trees, leaving nothing but a bare branch, or take the time to watch a butterfly escape from its cocoon, spreading its wings and flying free for the first time? God of wisdom, slow us musicians, pastors, and church laity down. We spend countless hours working to perfect our tasks that we forget what is most important, you. Great creator, the miracles of nature that you have placed in front of us throughout your creation, we do not take the time to see them because we are perfecting our own works. Send down your spirit upon us to calm us and to allow us to see these great miracles in our daily lives. Allow to take the time to see these miracles, for if we do, they will help us to change the way we act. And for in time, we will find our own self-worth. Gracious and loving God, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth and the glory of the skies, for the gift of the community and the blessing of the family and friends, for all the ways in which we experience you, your joy every day. For the laughter of children and the wisdom of your elders, we give you thanks. We are so blessed to be part of a body of Christ, 
the community of believers. We thank you for those who walk this journey with us, who help us to discern the right path to follow your will when our ways seem unclear. Father, we also thank you for our brothers and sisters around the world and in our church community. We lift up our joys and concerns to you this morning, O gracious, loving God. We lift these prayers, spoken and not spoken, in hopes you hear us and grant us your guidance. We are also mindful for those we are praying for in our community, praying for Ellen and Eric S., who are battling COVID infection and are both medically fragile. Prayers for Ashley L. as she recovers from surgery. Prayers for Sue D. in medical testing. Prayers for J.S. as, he, J. S. as he's recovering from a brain, uh, brain tumor surgery. We pray for the Hagen family and the passing of a son and a brother. We pray for our brother Doug who is continuing to get stronger and stronger after surgery. We pray for Sister Gail from the choir as she had a, um, as she twisted her ankle and we pray for Louise uh, and any illness that she may have. We ask for, your, uh, for you to give those strength who may be ill or needing <coughs> your guidance. May your presence provide healing and comfort to those in need and may we, your people, offer ourselves in love and service to those who come across our path. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Friends, as we continue our celebration this morning, I invite you to stand and again join us in song as we sing our closing hymn of praise, number four, How Great Thou Art. Number four, How Great Thou Art. I invite you to stand and join us.
Ah, what a way to end. Dear Lord, as we go forth, let that grace of yours just fall on us. May we be filled with hesed, and may we live in shalom, and may we be your beloved children in all the places we are this week. We pray in your name. Amen.